Hey everybody, good afternoon. My name is Ralph Smith and thank you for taking the time to check out this blog entry regarding Cisco's ELM or Enterprise Licensing Manager. So the purpose of this demonstration is to kind of cover one of those topics that a lot of my students ask me about when they come into any of these CCNA voice classes or CCNP voice classes that I teach for Strongman Live. And that, that topic really focuses around Cisco's approach from shifting their licensing manager directly away from their publisher and A.X code over to the ability to have it both co-resident or a separate virtual appliance and 9.x code moving upwards towards 10.0 and probably thereafter. So because it's not really technically covered in the course, we do cover it as far as, you know, kind of uh, having a conversation on the side and going back and forth. But I'd like to go ahead and spend a couple minutes and show you how that's configured in the event that you want to set it up in a uh, a demo slash lab environment, either in your uh, corporate location, or if you're going to go ahead and set this up at home to hopefully kind of get familiar with how licensing is going to be handled in the future. So we'll jump into the, uh, the actual demonstration. Now the equipment that I'm using is pretty bare bones, it's pretty simple. So to clarify, for the purposes of this demonstration, this is going to be for those who are really looking to mock up a lab. Um, again, it could be in production, but geared probably towards those who are doing it at home. Um, for at home, uh, what we have here is a basic Windows 7 PC. Uh, it's going to have uh, you know, 8 gigs of memory. It's got a, a 2.67 gig processor. Nothing too fancy. Now, what you are going to have to have if you're going to go ahead and do this demo or follow with me is you're going to have to source a copy of uh, you know, Call Manager. So generally, that's going to be a DVD or ISO image. Uh, we can see here uh, I use 9.1, so the image is located on my desktop in a folder called TFTP, it's CUCM 9.1 ISO. So uh, first thing, that's the first major step. So contact a reseller, ask your engineers, hey, can I get a copy of this image? And just remember, uh, for those who don't know actually, let's start there. At uh, Prior to 9.x code, Cisco used to say, hey, if you have a copy of Call Manager, it's gonna run in a demo environment and basically give you 150 DLUs, device license units. Fantastic. And in fact, the awesome thing that Cisco did is I took it a step further than that and said, hey, we're going to allow you to go and set up up to three servers. So publisher, subscriber one, subscriber two. Really test all the bells and whistles of having uh, call manager groups, redundant servers, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have the resources, you can technically do this times three. Now with 9.x moving forward, there are some small changes, particularly when it comes to the demo environment. So now the demo is no longer a, a limited time frame, if you will. You get 60 days when you actually spin up this virtual machine and get it rocking and rolling, and you'll see that when you log in. Now what you can do as a recommendation is you can go out to Cisco's website and you can fill out a form and request an additional six months to really kind of cut your teeth and get familiar with the, uh, the, uh, the equipment, if you will, the version of Call Manager. For the purposes of now, we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to show you guys how to set up Call Manager, but more specifically, how to actually set up ELM, Cisco's Enterprise Licensing Manager. So, in the demonstration, we go back over to our, our machine, and first things first, I brought up in my environment, I have VMware Workstation, I have 9.0. Now, if you're going to purchase this, you can go online, uh, I want to say it's right around 50 bucks. Uh, maybe you have a, a contract with VMware, you have a salesperson that can get you a better deal. But again, this is more geared for those who are working at home studying and saying, hey, I really need to cut my teeth on Call Manager. What can I use? So for $50, it's worth the weight of gold, VMware Workstation 9.0. You could use 8.0 as well. I'm going to go ahead and go to File, New, Add a New Virtual Machine, which takes me here. Right? So I did skip, skip that step, but pretty basic. Now from there, if I had the physical ISO burnt on a DVD, I could select my DVD drive. But I have an ISO, I'm just going to use that. Now the first thing you notice here is VMware Workstation says, whoa, 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 we can't detect what operating system you're going to use. Hopefully if you've taken this class or you studied, you know, ICOM, which is CSNA Voice, CIPG1, CIPG2, or even T-Shoot, or T-Voice technically, um, T-Shoot we write in the switching, I always kind of emphasize, hey guys, remember, Cisco has since moved away with 7.0, Windows Server as an underlying architecture, or OS, we're now rocking Red Hat Linux Enterprise. Um, what I use is Red Hat Linux Enterprise 4 32-bit. 
So what they're referring to here is it can't detect if it's Windows, is it Linux, is it Unix, is it OS X. So we're gonna have to go in and tell it. Again, real basic stuff. So we'll click next in this example. And then from here, I have my options. So I went ahead and selected Linux. If I look at my laundry list of, of different flavors of it, you can see a lot here, right? So CentOS, there's Debian, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Oracle, and then all the various flavors are Red Hat Enterprise. So it doesn't say Red Hat Enterprise Linux for 32-bit. With uh, VMware Workstation 9, I want to say with 8.0 it did say 32-bit, but just go ahead and you know take my word for it. If it doesn't say 64-bit, uh, it's 32-bit. So we're gonna choose that as our underlying guest operating system. Now to go ahead and clarify, this is where you know we have to make sure and feel confident that we don't really have to know the Linux or Unix slash command line or underlying OS. We're just telling VMware, our virtual appliance, if you will, what it's gonna be running underneath the hood. The Linux distro that we're using, again, it's gonna be CUCM 9.1. And we're going to see this when we hit play and we start bringing up this virtual machine. It's going to spin up Linux using this shell. So uh, from here, we click next. Now for a virtual machine name, call it whatever you want. Uh, for the purposes of the demo, I'll go and call it CUCM. Let's go 9.1. You can specify the location you want to install it on. Uh, again, I'm going to keep it simple for a uh, that demo environment. I'm going to keep it on the local desktop. If you have a SAN, a NAS, you know, a, a shared folder somewhere, you can drop it wherever you want. Now here's where you really have to pay attention. So we have different options here. So one of the other things I cover in CSNA Voice as well as CIPT1, really those two courses, is I talk about the minimum requirements that you need in order to run Call Manager. And when I say that, you know, in the class, in some of the classes, depending on the feedback, we go in great detail. A lot of times the students go, hey, I absolutely understand that, no problem, let's move on. So let's talk about it for a second. So Cisco says with any version of Call Manager, and let's stay with, within the realm of 8.0, let's just say let's say 10.0, right? So we have 8.0, 8.5, 8.6, 9.0, 9.1, 10.0, 10.5. .10 okay, so for now, 8.0 or 8.x, 9.x. That's the range we're going to focus on. So where does it get a little tricky here? We're using 9.1. So if you're not familiar with this, anything that is 8.5 or below. We need a 72 gig hard drive, two gig processor, two gigs of RAM. And when you've read that in documentation, you see it in the courseware, maybe you're scratching your head going, okay, that's real basic, but what does that really mean? We're talking about it right here, all right? So during our, our, our VMware, our virtual machine wizard, we specify our disk capacity. This is what's gonna dictate if Call Manager will one, even install, but two, here's that little kicker, that little super secret, you don't really cover this in class. You don't read it in the documentation in the courseware. Is what if I want to set up Cisco Unity Connection? What if I want to spin up Cisco uh, Unified Communications Biz Edition? Right? For those who don't know that, it's on the same exact ISO that I have here. And I'm only going to be able to do those other two options if I increase my disk size to the standard that Cisco recommends or actually you know, specifies. So as an example, because it's Linux, VMware goes, oh, you need 20 gig hard drive. It's very, very small. But we have to go ahead and take it a step further. We could set the 72 gigs. For myself, I like nice, even numbers. I'm going to go ahead and hit 80 gigs right, as a maximum space. Now, for production, this is obviously probably going to be larger for, you know, for, for real, real networks. Now, we could store it as a single virtual disk file. Not a big fan of that. Ideally, I want to do what's called thin provisioning. And I'm going to split them up into multiple disks. And that way, if I have to copy this across the network, I'm not trying to shove a four gig file you know, across the link. So I'll go and hit next. Now from here, it says, hey, we look like we're ready to go. What do you think? Here's where we need to stop, right? And you need to say, okay, you know what? This isn't enough. Because taking a look at this, as I just previously mentioned a couple of minutes ago, we're going, okay, we're gonna go and take your, your 72 minimum. We're gonna bump it up to 80, but look at our memory. It's 512 uh, megabytes. Right, so that's not enough. So here's the point of the story. If you're gonna be using call manager 8.5 or below, two gigs, all right? So um, that's one specification. If we're gonna use 8.6 plus, it's four gigs. Now here's a catch to it. Only for the purposes of the demo for your own lab environment, not for production, 
you could technically say, let's go and bump this up to four gigs to get it to install. But after the install, we can crank it down to two gigs to kind of work in a demo environment. Would not recommend that production. And the only way I mention that, or the only reason I mention that, is because maybe you know maybe the machine you're installing this on, like my workstation behind me, maybe it only has four gigs. Well, if you allocate all four gigs to your virtual machine, you're going to have a very very miserable time using the machine itself. All right, so we're fine here. I have eight gigs uh, in the back end, but we do have to go and change this. So for customized hardware, a couple options here. You don't have to follow all these. Some you do, some are gonna be optional. So here we go. For memory, you definitely have to change it. So if you know the math, you can set this to 4,096. All right, take that, divide it by four, so one gig, or you can just bump your slider up. All right, so right there, 4,096. Now, you'll notice it doesn't change here. That's fine, it'll change once you close it. Now, for processors, we could add more processors more cores if you had them. I'm not gonna get into that for this particular blog. We'll keep it the default. What we will go and do, all I like to do is go ahead and delete my floppy. I don't have a floppy disk. I don't know the last time you guys used a floppy disk. Call Manager doesn't need a floppy disk. So I'll delete it. The only other thing I'm gonna do here, you know, and there is a printer, I guess we can go ahead and delete that as well. But uh, we'll come with that, we'll, we'll talk about that later. For the network adapter, um, I almost always set this to bridge. So that way it uses a IP address on my physical network instead of using a simulated or natted IP address in VMware. Either which way is gonna work, all right? So if you wanna use a natted IP address that's different than the host OS, you can for myself. I'm gonna go and skip that and say, no, go ahead and pull an IP address or I'm gonna stackly set it, more preferably in call manager, uh, using the same subnet as my host machine. So I'm gonna set it to bridge. From there, I'll go and close out. And at that point, it looks like it's good to go. I'll hit finish, and we'll see it pop up here in a tab. Now, as far as you're concerned, you've basically just built your appliance. Now, for those who may be wondering, like, wait a minute, I thought in a production network, I can do this with a template, and it kind of does all the work for me. It does, and that's true. What we're referring to in that scenario is you can download, if you have the right credentials via Cisco's website, what's called an OVA. It's basically a template. And if I had uh, VMware or uh, VMware's vCenter appliance here and ESXi set up, which I do for a different demonstration that I'll deliver to you guys later on, you know, in the upcoming blogs, is we can basically say, hey, fire a vCenter, point to an OVA, hit a template, check my hardware, and then magically do all the work for us. Again, the focus of this blog is for those who want to set it up for maybe a, a production a demo and or lab demo at their house, right? But not production in general. So other than that, we'll hit play, and this is where it'll take a couple minutes to go through the actual startup, All right? So we'll give it a couple minutes, and we'll talk about some of the basic setup here, and then we'll move on. Now, what we can see behind the scenes is that uh, the distro is loading up. We can tell if you've never seen it before. Um, now, this is not Windows. This is what Linux looks like when it installs. And this could take anywhere from you know one minute to up towards of maybe four or five minutes, and that comes down to physical hardware. Are you installing this on an SSD drive, a solid state drive? Do you have enough memory? You know uh, what else is going on in your computer? As far as this local workstation is concerned, there is nothing going on, at least that I'm aware of. Um, it's just running VMware Workstation, All right? So there's no uh, Windows updates. There's no iTunes in the background. We're just using it just for demo purposes. Now what you're gonna see here is that uh, so occasionally it'll do this a couple of times. So VMware Workstation goes in and says, hey, we're detecting your server hardware. What it's really referring to is it's looking at the, the VMware virtual appliance, the shell we just built, and making sure it meets all requirements. So an example, instead of choosing an 80 gig hard drive, let's say I chose 70, which is two gigs below the minimum specification that Call Manager requires it would still go to the hardware test, but then it would pop up and say, well, you can't install anything because you don't meet the minimum hardware requirements. So again, I could have got away with a 72 gig hard drive, but I did need at least four gigs of memory. And um, you know, so this will be fine. And what we should see here is it should pop up and show us we have the ability to set up both call manager and the new Cisco ELM. 
Now, why this is going, a little bit of an extra uh, you know, free pro tip for you guys, is I just came back from Cisco Live. Those who are old school probably know as Cisco Networkers. In San Francisco, about three weeks ago. Thank you, Stroman, for sending me there. And uh, one thing that I learned sitting in some of the new lectures was that Cisco ELM, what we're talking about, not to throw you too many curveballs, is now going to be called Cisco PLM. And you're probably scratching your head going, what is what, is, what are you talking about? Well, the whole purpose of this demo is to talk about the new enterprise licensing manager for 9.x that is now called PLM or Prime License Manager. So now maybe you're putting the two together, you're going, oh, wait a minute, I've heard of Cisco's Prime Collaboration Tool, kind of the successor to Cisco Works. So what Cisco is doing is really kind of changing the naming conventions to make it kind of, you know, easier to follow, et cetera, et cetera. So right now it says Cisco Enterprise License Manager 10.x, mm, I think 0N5 will be called PLM. It'll do the same exact thing. So back into our demo, we can see that we have two supported installations. So call manager, and now, which you don't have on anything prior to 9.x, we've got Cisco Enterprise License Manager. Below it, it's kind of odd it does this, but it says, hey, products that are not supported on the current hardware is voicemail, Cisco Unity Connection, and then call manager business edition 5000. And the reason why you don't have that, abil uh, that uh, ability to select those two options is because of our hard drive space. So. Uh, what I can do, and I probably will do in the future, is I'll probably spin up another blog and then show you guys how to install the other applications. All you really have to do, if you wanted to do that initially, is you know either create another virtual machine and then increase the size of your hard disk space, at least for Cisco Unity Connection, to 160 gigs. Now, you're not going to use 160 gigs. If you actually look at the hard drive, once you deploy it, you fully spin up Cisco Unity Connection, I want to say it's maybe somewhere between 20 to 30 gigs it's actually using. But it requires a minimum of 100, and, it's maybe 40, but 160 gigs, I believe, is the number. Anyhow, so one of the things I like to talk about as we get ready to wrap up the demonstration for this blog, we'll call it part one, if you will, is that we could choose to install Call Manager and or ELM. So for now, uh, we're going to leave off here and the reason why I want to show this to you is because now with 9.x moving forward, your, your license manager no longer has to be your publisher. It can be co-resident, which means I can set up call manager based on what I have right now, or I can scroll down, hit spacebar, and choose Cisco Enterprise License Manager. So think about kind of the pros and cons of each. Uh, first, my pops in my head, you know, one of the biggest pros to being able to set up a separate appliance, a separate virtual machine with Cisco Enterprise License Manager is now our licenses are managed on a separate appliance, which means if we lose our publisher, our licensing doesn't completely fall on its face anymore. All right, we have a separate license manager that's still up and running. However, if we don't have the resources available, we still have the functionality here to go ahead and say, well, go ahead and still make our publisher our license, our license manager. We don't really have the need or desire to create a separate virtual machine, manage it, et cetera, et cetera. So you have the option here. Um, a little more install. The good thing about ELM is that it installs fairly quickly, like Cisco Uni Connection versus Call Manager, which can take quite a while. All right, so that's it for the uh, this particular blog. We'll call it version one. Uh, what I'm gonna do in the future is release another version, which shows the install of both Call Manager 9.1 as well as ELM 9.1, and then show you how to hook the two in together, and then what it looks like when you spin it up in your demo environment. So other than that, um, thank you for joining the session, taking a look at the video, and stay tuned for more updates for anything CCNA voice and or CCMP voice coming to you from Stormin' Live.